Ah, hello, my hearties. A very good morning to you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our broadcast for Good Friday morning. Good to have you with us. Our live stream, of course, one hour of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment for not just one nation, but all the nations watching live on Facebook here. Welcome, 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 I say. We are, of course, at the later time of 11 o'clock this morning. I thought that might suit you. Dinky do Scotty, says Jack. Well done, Jack. You're absolutely fussed on there. That is clever. There we are. Because it's always a bit of a competition for who's going to get to Scotty McClue's live stream first. Craig says, hello, Dinky Do. Hope you're keeping okay. Excellent, Craig. Lovely to be with you all. And of course, Dinky Do. Excellent stuff. And we'll have a fabulous, fabulous hour, as we always do. But the important thing is to share and share and share. There's the wonderful Gordon Roddick. Good morning, Gordon. Lovely to have you with us. Hi, Scotty. Happy Good Friday, says Kareem. Absolutely. Larry Donaldson, Dinky Doo. Hello, Dinky Doo. Hope you're keeping okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. Gordon Dinky Doo, of course, a very good morning to you. Always lovely to have you with us. Good morning, Scotty. It says, Gordon. Gordon, can you tell me, is this instant, uh, as soon as you can hear me say that, just put yes. That would be fantastic. Then I'll know if there's any delay in uh, in what's going out. Jim Wilson's watching. Uh, good morning, Jim Dinky Doo. Uh, always lovely to have you with us, of course. Excellent stuff. And we'll tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10, nice and sharp. Great response yesterday, by the way, folks. Quite small numbers when we'd finished, but it then shot up during the day. So obviously there is a great demand for watching the Scotty McClure live stream, either on demand at the time or a little bit later. I've got myself a little bit of the... Uh... Oh, that's lush. Uh, I'm on the Arrow Grey again, so just to let you know, we're on the Arrow Grey. Uh, Robert Rovers, good morning, Scotty Dinky Doo. Dinky Doo, Scotty, happy Friday, my friend, says the wonderful Paul J. Curry. Good to have you with us, Paul. Excellent stuff, and welcome, welcome, welcome. How are things going for you? I had to deal with a lot of dafties on Facebook earlier today, doing the nut about the... Um, the MPs uh, getting money for staying at home. Listen, uh, somebody had said it would be better in the NHS. These are separate budgets, you've got to remember. If it wasn't for the MPs, we wouldn't have an NHS. Hi from Glenrothes, says Martin Byrne. Good morning, morning, sir, says Charles A. Diver. Excellent, Charles. Lovely to have you with us. Stephen Mulgrew, Duncan Liddell. Uh, good morning, good morning to every single one of you. Let's get sharing. Let folk know we are on. Very, very important. Get down to the sharing nice and sharp. Sharp sharing, I say, because it's all in the sharing. There's the wonderful Stephen Menzies. Welcome, Stephen. Good to have you with us. Thanks very much for the picture of that steam sentinel the other day. Now, I've got another one for you I'm going to tell you about. I'm going to run this one past you. A Stanley steamer. Now, you'll not, uh, I can trust you here, you'll not go looking it up. Are you familiar with it? See how quick you can come back to me on the Stanley steamer. That would be absolutely fantastic. Oh, good morning. Uh, a Labrador visiting us. Excellent. We don't mind that at all. Labradors are entitled to it as well. The only thing he's going to start sniffing about now, and of course there are um, low voltage cables, and if he pulls one of those out, then the game's up. Uh, today is uh, supposed to be hotter compared to Madrid. People, stay in your garden. Stay in any way. But you know what I did think? I thought, we're paying these high high um, specialists, really, really knowledgeable, knowledgeable characters, and you hear them on television and radio all the time, and they're just saying, stay at home. I mean, I'll, I'll, I can do that for half the price. Stay at home. You know, good morning, Scotty. Alistair King's watching. Good morning, Alistair. Graham Bell's watching. In relation to Alexander Graham Bell, Graham, uh, just shared from my great friend Craig Downey. Thanks, Jack. Jack Millie is there. Susan Forrest. Good morning, Scotty. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, Scotty. Top man, says Stephen Mulgrew. And you, sir. Clyde, don't wreck the shop, for goodness sake. So there we are. We've got the Labrador here. 
my goodness me. Um, so uh, excellent. No, no, I told you not to do that. Stop. There we are. He thinks it's Christmas. Do you know what I mean? All this stuff in. He thinks it's wonderful that uh, he's got his old chum uh, with him at home. Lovely soon as uh, Susan Dinky do. Who else we got? John Jones. Dinky do, Scotty. John Jones, excellent. Let me do the sharing. Otherwise, we neglect it. I get talking to you guys and we, we neglect the sharing. And we mustn't because the whole thing depends on the sharing. Share to a page, it says here. And if you can all do the same, guys, all your gamers, your friends, anybody that you know, social media, websites, groups, say, are you all watching Scotty McClure? So there we are. That's what we're needing to know. Are we all watching? Susan says, good morning, Scotty and Clyde. And gives us a kiss. Thank you, darling. Mwah. And to you, Susan, down in Lancashire there. And uh, I think he's settled down. I think he's found something of interest in his way to see if it's chewable, if it can be consumed. I know he's here. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> so there we go. We're going to get the tail wagging against the chair leg in a minute. I just know this is going to happen. Clyde, what are you doing? Come here. Do you want to see the nation? Here, come here. Do you want to say hello to the nation? Just a quick hello. Do you want to say a quick hello? Just a quick hello. Oh, come here. <laughs> come here. Now, he's making himself as heavy as possible. You know what they do, you know. He's going, no, 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 I'm staying down here. And he's going to wreck the shop. What, you're going to wreck the shop? You're going to wreck the shop. Stop. <laughs> come here. <laughs> go on, go that way. There we are. Sorry about that. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, never work with children and animals uh, professionally, they say. Um, good morning from the fine county of Cambridgeshire. It's a fine day here, Scotty. Pity we can't go out. I know Cambridgeshire will be gorgeous down there in Fenland. And I know Cambridge very well. My um, old Labrador we went swimming in the cam by the Bridge of Sighs. Uh, that was after we had to give him a good wash because he'd been at the backs. Do you know the backs? So there we are. He'd been in the backs in Cambridge. People need to realise budgets are split between different sectors. NHS is a separate money pot from the MPs' wages. I know, Paul J. Curry, you can't explain. You get these dafties. It's the same as saying the Queen should sell her brooch and that would pay for the NHS. It doesn't work. What happens when the money is gone? Who pays for the NHS then? The NHS is the property of the politicians. Leave the Queen alone. So there we are. Good morning. Good morning. Stephen Menzies. Lovely, lovely. I've never heard that before. Would like to know about it. What was that, Stephen? What were you going to say there? Um, so there we are. Uh, what do you think of MPs taking a 10k wage rise because they have to work at home? Surely that should go to the NHS. No, Alistair King. That's what we're just discussing. The NHS is funded by us. If there were no MPs, there would be no NHS. They founded the thing in the first place. So you need good government. And it's very small beer. It would just get swallowed up. It wouldn't keep the NHS. I mean, uh, you know, if you're wanting to quote what should go to the NHS, what about what was on the side of the bus when we had Brexit? You know, get that sorted out. You need to understand these are all separate budgets. I mean, we could all just sell everything, all your houses, your homes, your kids' lunch money, and give it to the NHS. But then we'd all be sick and the NHS would become overburdened. Do you see what I mean? So, you know, it's 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 just crazy, crazy stuff. It's small beer. Dinky-doo, Scotty McClure, says Nicky Graham. Dinky-doo, Nicky. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, Lindsay Lulu Clayton is watching. Good morning, Lindsay Lulu Clayton. Lovely to have you with us. And Dinky-doo, did I share that there? Did I actually share? Did I get on to sharing it? I hope so. There we are. I shall find out. We'll try again, just in case I didn't. So share to page. 
wonderful stuff. And if you can all do the same, guys, we must get these numbers up big style. Very important. I came on an hour later so the Lazy Bones could join us this morning. Do you like the change of time? Feedback all the time. This is your stream. J.M. Rogers, Dinky Doo, welcome. Alistair McEwen, Johnny Garvey. Wonderful John Garvey. Welcome, Johnny. Uh, shared, Scotty McClure says, Kareem, Kareem, you're such a top man. Such a top man. Wonderful Frank Gilfeathers watching us. Perhaps one of the finest television reporters you could meet. And Mauro is with us. Mauro, Mauro Bear. Mauro, are you in Italy or are you here? Bella, Bella, bellissimo. So there we are. Wonderful, bravo, bravissimo. Show us the dog, says John Marshall Doys. Away now, John. I was frightened he was going to wreck the shop. I mean, I've got a glass of water here. I've got um, a cup of Earl Grey. Um, I've got computer equipment coming out of my ears. And, uh, well, not quite coming out of my ears because I don't have any earphones on. Um, and, um, you know, he was sniffling about shoving the desk. You know what a Labrador is like? He's not a big Labrador. Lord Reith, the big Labrador, could turn the place over in a minute. You know, no problem at all. Uh, Nicola Tom, dinky do. You know, they find an old toy or a ball that's buried underneath the uh, equipment and they want to get that out. Ken Miles says, great to hear your lovely accent, Scotty. It makes me homesick. No, no, the world is your home, Ken. Wherever you are is home. So there you are. You're a citizen of the world. Fraser McDuff, dinky do. I'll share, Scotty. Nicky Graham, I thank you very, very much. I'm just about to do the same here myself. There we are. So you're ahead of me now because I've been blethering. That's the stuff, blethering. But that's what it's all about. It is a talk show and a shout-out show. And it's about the people who come and join us. This show is about the audience. How's that? Did you all get the wee movie I made on Port Glasgow the other day? It seems to have gone down very well. Morning, Scotty. Your dog looks a wee bit nicer than you. Lol, I hope you're well, my friend. Well, listen, our Labradors are outstandingly handsome. So that still leaves you and I with a wee bit leeway, Johnny. See what I just did there. Uh, abolish the monarchy, says Thomas Beden. No, that would be the most foolish thing we could ever, ever do. The monarchy, Thomas Beden, is virtually self-financing. Don't fall for any of the nonsense you hear about it. It's very small money. The maximum it costs us is around 50, 60 P a year, depending on how things are. They've got top, 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 top accountants working for the royal household, i.e. working for us, working for the head of state, which is a, a state asset. So we have a head of state. It's fantastic. And we are the envy of the world. If you abolish the monarchy, we're finished with a third world country. So there you go. So if that's what you want, if it's poverty you're after, yeah, sure, abolish the monarchy. Otherwise, keep it. Uh, fantastic, outstanding monarchy. Uh, shocked that people are still not obeying social distancing rules. I was walking down my street yesterday. I was trying to give them some space, but they wouldn't give me any. Bad news, Jack. I'm, th I'm just beginning to wonder if they're maybe not bright, you know, because there are quite a few dafties out there. I've made a big mistake in my life of assuming that everyone was cleverer than me. And um, surprise, I found out that they weren't. <laughs> but it took a while. Uh, Scotty, that's superb. Thank you, mate. Bravo, bravissimo. He's in Italy. Mauro Bear, we send a love to Italy. You poor souls, you have been having a tough time. And we send love from Scotland to Italy. Wonderful, because we have huge connection with Italy. Big, big Italian community come to Scotland. Wonderful. And uh, I have so many Italian friends. Oh, beautiful. I always remember when I worked in banking and I was working in a certain branch of the bank and I said to the accountant, we have a big um, Italian clientele. He went, yes, and they're all extremely nice to work with. So there you go, guys. That's it from the horse's mouth. Kenny Hyde, good morning, Scotty. Good morning, Kenny. Lovely to have you with us. It was great 
to hear from you yesterday. Kenny Hyde there, a wonderful man who has devoted his life to his lovely family and to cars. That What that man does not know about cars is not worth knowing. There you are. Wonderful stuff. And uh, Stephen Menzies was the other type of steam motor vehicle. Oh, sorry. Yes, the Stanley Steamer. Right? So this was... Uh, um, a Stanley. It was a steam car. Fabulous little thing. And it was, a, it was an attempt at popular motoring, at popularizing motoring, uh, with a steam car. The only trouble is, um, the boiler was beneath the driver's seat. Not that I'm saying it was trouble. So you just had to make sure that your water levels were up. You had to keep an eye on your T's and P's because, um, as you know, any steam engine is a potential bomb. So there you go. If it boiler dries out, bang, game's up. Such positive vibes, Scotty. You're an inspiration, sir. I thank you, Ken Miles. I haven't even scratched the surface yet. Feed the dog, says Peter Campbell. The dog could not be better fed. The dog, you know, has... Um, the, I just thought of a joke I heard this morning, you know. The dog is, um, his food's down all the time and he just chooses if he wants to eat or if not and he is not greedy, which for a Labrador deserves uh, a medal. Uh, Kareem, one of the SN, no, no, in fact, that's wrong. Labradors are not greedy, they just enjoy their food. So there you are. One of the SNP MPs said his office will not use the additional 10,000. It won't be needed because he'll make sure it's managed well. Your thoughts? No, Scotty, I like the 10 a.m. I need to get, this is Kareem talking, uh, I need to get up early and stick to a routine. Right, guys, uh, you know, let me away with it this Good Friday, but do you prefer 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock? For the pop-ups. Kareem's definitely a 10 o'clock man. Morning, Scotty Dinky Do, says the wonderful Brian Murphy. Good morning, Brian. Lovely to have you with us. And welcome, welcome, welcome to our live stream. Thousands upon thousands of you folks. I was just doing a short calculation, and yesterday alone we were at um, 15,000, sorry, 20,000 over the piece. So there were since we started doing these. Just finished a workout with Social Fit. I couldn't find you guys. Wayne Watson, how can you not find Scotty McClure? The wonderful Neil Tipping's watching down in Manchester. Neil Tipping, or in Liverpool, I say. Is it Liverpool, Neil? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Neil Tipping was one of the finest wizards of the big switchboard I ever had. Scotty, can you please do two live streams? One in the morning at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. and start one in the afternoon around 2 or 3 Anybody up for that? Two live streams a day, could we cope? Would the market stand it? So there we are. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Kieran, nice to hear from you, but we're not going there. Um, sorry, Scotty. Kenny here again. Man, meant to add some chat to the good morning. Was I right in saying that your first car, the Somerset, came from Pearson's of Weems Bay? the oldest family garage in Scotland. It did indeed, Kenny, you are quite right. Um, out of interest, do you remember the reg? Yes, I do remember the reg. So there you are, because um, it was, um, pardon my vehicle. There we are, PMV 832. It started its life in London. So there we go, and it came from Pearson's of Weems Bay, John Pearson Motors 1924 Limited, to be precise. And uh, it cost me £20. So there you are. And I can remember Mr. Pearson uh, Senior. I'm not sure if he was the most senior Pearson. No, the original John Pearson would be the most senior Pearson. And then this was Mr. Pearson Archie, Archibald, and uh, a wonderful man. And I said to him, do you by any chance, she needs a water pump, do you by any chance have one? This was 1972. And Archie sort of mused for a second and he said, I'll have one somewhere. And he went upstairs to his store 
and came down with a water pump for uh, the Austin Somerset. And uh, I said to him, um, what, uh, what do I owe you? And as a joke, he smiled and he said, oh, well, it's a fair age and there's not many of them, so it'll be worth quite a bit. And I looked, must have looked a little bit anxious. And on the box was eight and six, 42 and a half P. And I think I said to him, could I give you 10 shillings? And he said, that'll be fine. <laughs> what a lovely man. So there you are. Lovely family, the Pearsons of Weems Bay. Sorry, um, what have we got here? Yes, but 10K to work from home, Scotty, I think it's shameful. There are millions of people having to work from home and can't make ends meet. If it's good enough for MPs, it's good enough for the people that pay their taxes. Well, no, because you see, an MP has been elected. They've gone through the process and they have to prove themselves again and again and again. They're on call. I think, I think they're on call 24 seven, to be quite honest with you. So if that's the case, it's small beer, Alistair, for everything they're doing. Remember, they've got to fly up and down to London. Um, you know, if they're, um, from Scotland, but they're Westminster MPs. So there's all that to do. They've got an office to run. Uh, Thomas Beedon, they serve no purpose. What are you talking about? The MPs of the monarchy. Monarchy serve a huge purpose. Because in 1688, the monarch used to run the lot. And in 1688, we brought over William and Mary, James II's daughter and her husband, and uh, they came over, and that was called the Glorious Revolution. And that was the end to absolute monarchy. The monarch allowed their power to go through the people, to go to parliament. Yeah? So that was the start of constitutional monarchy in 1688, after your Bill of Rights, after the, the Glorious Revolution with William and Mary. That was your King William. That was your King Billy. So... Uh, that was that. And then he went and fought his father-in-law. Do you know what I mean? And the throne had gone uh, through different denominations of Christianity. Uh, you know, Catholic, Protestant, Protestant, Catholic, Protestant, all that sort of thing. So, um, you know, that brought in your, your act of secession and your laws of secession, etc., etc. That was the kind of start of it. Anyway... In 1603, Scotland took over the crown of England and Ireland, and you had the union of the crowns, right? So you've got your union of the crowns. Now, the crown is our symbol of authority. The monarch is the custodian and curator. So you need to have somebody looking after your symbol of authority. America's got the president. Their symbol of authority is a flag. All right. So every country has got that. Uh, Russia has a president, their symbol of authority, the flag, the hammer and sickle. So we're very, very lucky that we've got the monarchy and we've had a monarchy in Scotland for 2,347 years. So who are we to think they serve no purpose. They're absolutely pivotal. And if Scotland wants independence, and this is where all the independence people need to listen up very, very carefully indeed. If Scotland wants independence, they need to have the monarchy on side. It's nothing to do with the crown. It's to do with splitting parliaments. 1707, the union of the parliaments. 1603, the union of the crowns. All right. So it's to do with splitting the parliament, but you can never, ever, ever split the crown. The crown is sovereign. The crown is the authority. All right. So they serve a very, very, very pivotal purpose because nothing happens in this country without permission of the crown. OK, there we are. Royal assent. No law can be passed because it can be put through as a bill but it cannot become an act until it has the royal assent. E-S-S-E-N-T for the students. And get that down. I live in sunny Italy. Dinky do Scotty, says Mauro Bell. Si, fantastic, bellissimo. 
Nick Radcliffe's watching, Dave Anderson's watching, Michael Yule's watching. See when you're growing up, Scotty, what was your dream job? Ooh, I wanted to be a television announcer. And everybody just laughed and laughed at me. I wanted to be a television announcer and a newscaster. That was my dream job. Or I thought about maybe being um, a doctor or a lawyer. And at one point, I even toyed with, uh, with the church, with the ecclesiastical side. Anyway, I um, thought my best chance of being a television announcer is to go and become an actor, learn to be an actor. And that's what I did. So I went to the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama, the Royal Conservatoire, and trained. And um, there we are. The rest is history. And uh, I very fortunately became a television announcer. So there we are. Monarchy creates an ambassador for the UK, which is not politically aligned. Wayne, this is quality. Um, attracts a lot of business. However, perhaps they should exercise more power. Well, do you know, See when Boris was up to his shenanigans with the um, uh, prorogation of Parliament and things like that. People wondering, are you being absolutely up front with Her Majesty here, PM, you know? All that was going on at the time, all this Brexit, which has been forced through because your majority for leaving the UK, for leaving the EU, your UK majority was... Um, 1.2 million. So what you've got there, people screaming democracy, you've got 1.2 million dictating to almost 70 million. You've got four countries being ripped out of the European Union that they built up over 50 years of peace and prosperity. And um, three of them are being ripped out against their will. Where's the democracy? Let's all go figure. <clears throat> and I said at the time, the reason I'm telling you this is because I said at the time, perhaps this is a time for the Queen to take back power and become the absolute monarch and say, we are not leaving Europe or we are leaving Europe. But you lot need to stop your carry on. Sorry if I seem a bit angry about such a large rise. It just annoys me. People are at rock bottom while they have luxury. Um, well, no, you see, that's what I'm saying to you. I agree with a small rise, but 10K is disgusting. No, it's not, Alistair, because it's how far does it go. So all values are relative values. Say, for instance, you bought yourself, I don't know, a car that looked a bit of a write-off, but you thought, no, that's light, that's superficial damage. And you bought that car for £10,000, and uh, you worked on it for a fortnight, and then you sold it for £20,000. Would you be upset if somebody came round and said, I've just heard what you got for that motor. That's disgusting, ripping people off like that. You say, no, 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 no. I bought all the parts, and I put all the work in, and I did the job, and it's a really high-quality job. The car's worth the £20,000. Whoa! Ten grand in your pocket. Oh, do you see what I'm saying? You would be upset about that. You would think this is just not fair. That's your MPs for you. Do you see what I'm saying to you? Scotty, can you remind anyone who's in the new special category and is allowed out to travel to maintain their mental health to be responsible with this and to always consider others and stick to all other regulations that still apply to us? Ali Bryson, yes, of course. Absolutely. Remember that mental health is not uh, a sign of weakness. Mental health or poor mental health can be a sign of staying strong for far too long. Just so that you know, tipping you all the wink there. Uh, a very good thing, I think, for people's mental health is to watch Scotty McClue. Now, it's not clinically proven, but I suspect it's very good for us all. What do you think? Give us your opinion. Craig Mitchell's watching. What a top man. Arek Varsovia. Arek uh, in Poland. Is that right, Wayne? Is Arek in Poland? Morning, Scotty. Nice to see you, says Craig Mitchell. And you, Craig. Let's do some more sharing, guys. Let's get this shared right up there. And uh, let everybody know what's going on. Um, I'll share it to my story. 
Uh, share to your story. Uh, that's public. Oh, it's gone public. Public? My goodness me. Uh, Robert Rovers, I see the UK needs a lot of fruit and vegetable pickers, otherwise crops will be dumped instead of fines for these folk. Breaking social distancing rules. Send them there instead. Absolutely, Robert Rovers. Very important. Talking of um, fruit pickers, you also need fruit sowers. And I can remember I stayed in a wee cottage, a lovely wee cottage in East Lothian, on a farm. And um, I came out one morning, I always loved to see the farm. He had sheep in the garden and coos up at the fence. And um, I remember coming out one morning and I saw this. Looked like a little wooden hut being towed behind the tractor. And I saw uh, potatoes dropping into the drills, into the furrows. And I thought to myself, what a fabulous machine. Everything just so perfect. And I looked at it, it was all painted green and red. And I thought, it must be quite an old machine, or the wooden machine. I must ask the farmer to show me the machinery, because it was so clever. And then it came to the end of the field, and the, the tractor stopped, and uh, the back of it opened, and all these people got out. And what it was, they were sitting, chucking the tatties through holes in the floor. Fantastic, the sores. <coughs> Get off the drugs, Scotty, says Martin Gallen. Martin, you mustn't assume everybody shares your lifestyle. Uh, good morning, Scotty. Dinky Doo gives a shout out. Lovely to have you with us. I'd prefer 10 a.m., Scotty, says Jack. Right, Jack, I shall put this to the nation. Guys, we're still a bit, you know, are we doing, um, you know, are we doing 10 o'clock in the morning or are we doing 11? John Gallagher's watching. Morning, Scotty, says Aaron. Morning, Aaron Dinky Doo. Good day. Uh, Jack, you need to come on and tell me why you made that comment. Scotty, go back to doing Friday to Sunday, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. What, on Facebook Live? Do you think that would work? My slight concern about the social media is um, I don't own the platform, and it's kind of up to them how often they let people see it. You see what I mean? 11 a.m. be a good time for the morning pop-up, Scotty, says Brian Murphy. As my dad says, he's not greedy. He just likes a lot. Well, I remember being invited to a wedding, and it said on the invitation, do you have any dietary requirements? And I said, um, I just like a good portion. <laughs> Gordon Hadley. 10 o'clock's good, says Susan. Susan Forrest in Lancashire thinks 10 o'clock is better. Stephen Menzies, brilliant, didn't know that. Uh, I fired an Atlantic Southern region local. That was some work. Oh, was this about the boiler being under the seat, Stephen, in the Stanley steamer? <clears throat> Wayne Watson says, yes, 11 a.m. as I've got my social at 10 a.m. So there we are. Uh, Reg from the bill. Says Thomas, thank you to Thomas. Um, Archibald Mitchell uh, has been shouted on by Aaron Foy. Peter Connolly, Mauro, uh, you're welcome anytime, but please, please, Scotty, 11 o'clock in the morning would be great, perhaps. So, what we're saying, Mauro likes 11 in the morning, and Mauro's in Italy. Wonderful. 17 million unemployed in America, amazing, but not in a good way, says Jack. No, no. It is not in a good way. Calvin Allen, Stephen Menzies, used to like the old reg plates with the second and third letter that identified the town of registration. GM for Motherwell and Wishaw. Uh, SF and SC for Edinburgh. Am I correct? Um, G for Glasgow or GO. Um... XS for Paisley, VS for Greenock, AG for Ayrshire. Um, did I do ES for Perthshire? Uh, what was Dundee now? Who can remember Dundee? And did we have East Lothian? Did we have a separate council there? AF, I think, is AF Cornwall. You see, 
Carl's running about the number plate, RAF. You didn't see it. I think AF might be Cornwall. You used to get them in the AA handbook. You could see what they all were. I'm trying to think what else have we got. So SC being Edinburgh, people used to say, oh, I see you run a sugar Charlie. Yes, SC. How about we tune to lighten the mood, Scotty Loch Lomond, when you can. Do we want Loch Lomond? Right, okay, I shall do that. Um, do you want it on the pipe organ? Yes. <clears throat> Loch Lomond on the pipe organ. Here we go. <clears throat> on the pipe organ. Uh, so there we are, Alistair. How's that? That lightens the mood a wee bit. Lifts everyone's spirit. Lift up your hearts, I say. Uh, definitely 11 a.m. as most should be awake, and I've got my training at 10 a.m. on social fit. Are you from Aberdeen? Wit fit? Uh, live Facebook stream, it's great. Highly recommended to blow the cobwebs away during lockdown. Check it out at 11. I will win. It's mid-range level. Then at 6.30 p.m. it's more advanced. Keep fit. Well, I do a lot of keep fit. Of course, I'm a black belt in karaoke. So there we are. Excellent stuff. Uh, Chris Kirk's watching. Dinky do. Martin Burns watching. Uh, would you like Scotland to be independent? Um, I'm not over bothered, Martin. What I would like Scotland to do is acknowledge that it's not going anywhere without the crown. Uh, I also think, uh, so none of your republic nonsense, you can forget that. Um, I also would like to see Scotland have its own money. So that's the thing. Scotland very heavily subsidizes Westminster, and Westminster are reluctant to tell the rest of the um, UK that that's the case, and that's why they don't want it to leave. So what I would say, um, you know, if, if uh, I was sort of running the show in Scotland, I would say, we, we won't push for independence if we can keep our income and spend it in Scotland if you in Westminster would then require a grant from us, we will consider that. So that's what I would like to see. So I'm not a separatist. I'm not a greatly nationalistic. I am a very proud Scot. I've worked all over the UK and had a fantastic time in lovely places with lovely people. I've broadcast to Wales, to Ireland, to um, all of central Scotland, to all of the northeast, to all of the northwest, to the east and west midlands, and I broadcast nationally and been heard throughout the whole country. So um, I'm not bothered, but we need to acknowledge that the United Kingdom is a united kingdom of four separate countries, right? And we come together for the economic good. And this will lead to problems. I don't want, um, once the coronavirus is all sorted or we've found a vaccine or we've managed to uh, relax the rules or whatever, um, 
I don't want the coronavirus to get the blame for the economic annihilation that we will experience from leaving the EU, from coming away from a market of 510 million people in 28 countries to nothing. All right. So there we are. So that was my thinking. David Miller, dinky do. Thomas Peden is shouting on Marcella. Um, Wayne says, I was invited to Buckingham Palace in 1998 for a reception with them. Um, you put HRH the Queen, it's actually HM the Queen, Her Majesty. So the Queen's not Her Royal Highness, she's Her Majesty. Uh, Her Majesty the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh for Young Achievers. I never went as a holiday booked in Turkey. So there we are. A wonderful stuff. And then he mentions all the famous people. So there we are. Remember telling you years ago, I can't say that the way in because we don't know. So there we go. Sorry about that. Um, Kareem says, I watched the Alex Salmon show on the 700th anniversary of the Declaration of a Broth. It was very interesting. The Royal Family will bring in even more tourism to Scotland when we become independent. And that can only be a good thing for local businesses. Absolutely. And the Royal Family, the Queen is 50% Scots. Her mother was 100% Scots. Wonderful stuff. Her sister was born in Scotland, I think. I think was Margaret Rose born in Scotland at Glam's, was that right? Can we have a tour of your house and garden just to break things up a bit? A tour of McClue Towers. Oh, I'd have to charge you 25p. Um, there we are, and I'd need to tidy the place up. I like that, staying strong for too long. Awesome. I always prescribe exercise, healthy nutrition, social fitness, financial fitness, and mental fitness, components of overall fitness. Very important. Uh, yes, indeed, Wayne, very important. We love that. Uh, I'll give you a wee love there. Fantastic. Now, what I was going to say to you folks, if you, uh, when you're in lockdown, call Canny with the drink. Very important because I talked to a doctor recently. I mean, I've, I'm not saying this because I've given up the booze, but I've given up the booze. That's a by the by. That's so that I could jump in the car and drive at any time of the night or day. But I was talking to a doctor, I said, are there any benefits in alcohol at all? And he said, no, apart from as a, a disinhibitor, a de-inhibitor. So in other words, some people don't feel they can say things until they've had a refreshment. And then they, they, they flow like a bum. Um, but, you know, I think we would be better improving our communication and discussing things and saying what we think and what we feel. Um, and then you don't actually need the booze. So there you go. Uh, I, I remember that. Understand, Scotty, end of subject. Not another subject breaks. It was a shambles. Look where it got us. The future is bleak. The future is indeed bleak with the whole thing. But we're not, I mean, to be honest with you, if we decided to go back to the EU, they would be delighted. And it would make the Prime Minister of the day very powerful because you could get a cracker of a deal from the EU. So the time is right. So, you know, a wee phone call to the EU once everything settles down saying, look, Sorry about the troublemakers. Sorry about the confusion and the mix-up. Um, we, our lawyers, could uh, rescind Article 50 in, in a jiffy, and um, we'll stay. But we do want to thrash out a proper deal. Um, and I'm sure the EU would say, listen, guys, I'm up for that. We're up for that. That's no problem. Wayne says, I'm starting to see cracks in the unity of the EU, especially between Italy and Germany. Uh, the EU during these times. Wayne, <clears throat> don't blow things out of proportion. The EU is a fantastic setup. Yes, like all these big, big bodies, it would benefit from reform. There's no doubt about that. And this might be a good time to reform it if the UK says, we will come back into the single market if you can, A, give us a cracker of a deal, and B, sort out quite a few things that have gone a bit wrong with the whole setup. Because what we've had, and I had all these dafties shouting at me, NATO kept the peace. Of course, NATO kept the peace from 1948 
back to 40, 49. But um, Churchill's greatest dream was to have a United States of Europe with a single European army and a single commander in charge of it. And that was your Winston Churchill for you. So there you go, guys. Uh, goodbye, Scotty. Got to go. Maybe consider a Good Friday YouTube stream tonight, though. We may well do that, Jack. Fantastic. What's the time? Oh, for goodness sake. Uh, regards a time to stream. Need to place a poll on your page for 24 hours or so, says Wayne. Can we do that? Can we do that on Facebook? Gordon Sterling's watching. Dinky do. If you were to do 10 to 1 a.m., Scotty, I think you'd be in the bad books with Mrs. McClue. I think we might be ever so slightly. Uh, I see the police down south are now talking about checking people's shopping to see if it's essential. Now, I agree with stopping people they suspect of not going for shopping, but how can they say what's essential? Everybody's needs are different. Well, I'm going to tell you a wee joke. I shouldn't, but I thought it was quite funny. Um, you know, uh, an old lady went into a shop and she said, could I get a tin of cat food? And they said, no, some old people are buying cat food. So, um, you know, and, and they might have, you'd need to bring your cat and prove it. So she came round with the cat, so they gave her the cat food. The next day she went in and said, could she get a tin of dog food? So um, they said, you need to get your dog. So she went away and got the dog. Then she came back with a, a, a wee tin with a wee cover over it and she said to the shop assistant, do you want to pop your hand in there? So the shop assistant popped her hand and pulled it out, and she said, that smells terrible. She said, yes, but it was just to prove to you because I'm wanting a couple of toilet rolls. There we go. Right. Uh, Nigel Turner's watching. Thank you, dear. Gordon Ritchie. Thank you, dear. Lovely to have you with us. Don't see why the off-licenses are open when people are being fined for buying wine. That was a joke, by the way. It didn't happen, just in case we've got any purists watching. I don't see why the off licenses are open when people are being fined for buying wine. Yes, there shouldn't be. Alcohol should not be for sale. Um, Arek Varsova. Hello, Scotty. Greetings from Spain. Uh, SN for Dumbartonshire. Peter Connolly, dinky do a shout for Dumbartonshire. Hello, Arek, says Wayne. HS was... Oh, yes, that's the number plates, of course. What have we got there? SN was the number plates for Dumbartonshire. SB was Argyle. Yes, wonderful stuff. HS was Renfrewshire. Yes, Kenny. HS was Renfrewshire. You're absolutely right. And I remember uh, one gentleman had the first car in Renfrewshire. VS was Greenock. SS for Haddington. Fantastic Gordon Sterling. Yes. Wow, you were correct, says Stephen Menzies. What was I correct with, Stephen? Um, so there we are. I wasn't aware of anybody getting fined for buying wine. They might be fined if they've consumed it first. Uh, thanks, Scotty. Didn't you do beautiful stuff on the organ there, Scotty? Do you do uh, any Ivor Cutler too? Oh, Ken. We do anything on the organ, not a problem at all. Deborah Brett, hi from East Yorkshire. Deborah Brett, love to East Yorkshire. Great to hear from you. I know it so well. Hull, Bridlington. So there we are. Wonderful stuff. Scarborough. Um, is Scarborough still East Yorkshire? Scarborough, North Yorkshire. Interesting thought, that one. Uh, I know Hull's East Yorkshire. Um, I'm a black belt and doing nothing, says Arek Versovia. That is a great skill. It's one we should all learn to become very accomplished at doing nothing. Uh, Billy Hunter's watching, dinky you do. Mike McCabe's watching. I always remember my mother. She was wanting a hand with a dusting. You never ever said you were bored in our house or you got a yellow duster. And she was wanting a hand with a dusting. And I was lying on the sofa reading a book. And she said, you've done nothing today except read that book. Hello, Eric. Scotty, when I get around to you as there's a catch up with the comments. Absolutely, Wayne. Good man. I accepted that after Scotland remains independent, many will still want to identify themselves as British. But I acknowledge that many of Norwegians also identify themselves as Scandinavian. Well, you see, there's no such country as Britain. 
this is a bit of a revelation for you guys. So saying you're British means that you come from a land mass. And the big bit of the land mass is known as Great Britain. So all the wee uh, flag wavers that go, um, let's put the great back in Great Britain. The great of Great Britain is just the land mass. Like we have two islands off the west coast of Larg, off the west coast of Scotland, off Largs, called Great Cumbria and We Cumbria. You know, the Great Cumbria. And Milpert is on Great Cumbria. So there you are. And there was a minister in Milpert that used to pray for the Cumbrias and the adjoining islands of Britain. So there we are. Wonderful. And her son hid in Scotland, says John Carroll. Whose son did? So there we are. Maureen McAdam, time to get up and join us. Scott McLean, I need to go and walk the dogs. I'll listen to your pop-up on Sunday, 8 p.m. Have a good weekend, dinky-doo. Please, 10 a.m. starts during the week. So yeah, Kareem is a bit of a top man, Kareem, you know. Can you say hello to my mum and dad, Jim and Mary, who have managed to connect today and are watching the show? Jim and Mary, Jim and Mary Menzies, dinky do to you too. Mwah! From Scotty McClue and from everybody watching all around the world. Uh, Wayne says drinking in moderation can be a great stress relief and stress relief can be healthy. Especially everything in moderation, especially if you don't exercise for stress relief and mental fitness. But Wayne... Action equals reaction, your first law of physics there, right? So if you take alcohol, you can get an immediate de-stress, but then you get the payback. So you get an upper and a downer, up, down. And the paybacks, the hangover, what we used to call the screamers. What did I see last night? Oh, my goodness. I think I asked so-and-so to marry me and all that kind of stuff. The EU is showing cracks. I think we need to be looking at the cracks in the Union because that's not cracking, that's crumbling. Yes, what the Brexiteers have done is betrayed Britain. And um, they've broken it and they've busted it. And uh, what they've actually voted for, that 17.4 million, uh, offset by 16.2 million, is economic annihilation and the political fragmentation of the United Kingdom. Was that what they wanted? Democracy. Defo, EU needs reform. They're talking about an EU defence, which is causing friction between the EU and the USA. Germany being leading the EU, countries a different agenda from other EU countries. Uh, why is it EU protectionism? Don't get me wrong, I'm all for the EU, but reform. Yeah, but wait a minute, there's jealousies going on here and there'll be money at stake. So you've got, once you've got Europe or Western Europe, you've got a pretty big power. America doesn't like other powers. They, they're not so keen on other big dogs, right? They don't like big powers that might actually in any way economically challenge them. So if Europe's together, now remember, Germany, uh, Germany are our close allies and business partners. And up until a few weeks ago, we, along with our allies and friends Germany, controlled 30% of the whole EU market of 510 million people in 28 countries. Until a few dafties, a handful of Hooray Henrys, a few dafties, a few um, Alf Garnets decided on the madness of taking us out of that market with no backup. So what we'd have had to do was get agreements in principle trading with other countries. Would you rather trade with Europe? Would you rather have Europe agree the world health uh, trading rules? The, sorry, the world's trading rules, the WTO rules, would you rather have Europe negotiate that at the table with 28 countries at its back, or would you rather just this tiny little country, um, your four tiny little countries, three of which have been pulled out against their will, would you rather that they struggled to try and get a deal? I mean, why? 
should anybody listen to the UK when they don't have the backing of the EU? See where I'm coming from, guys. That's why it needs to discuss. Um, Ken Miles, just in, the police backtrack and searching trolleys, but officers still patrol non-essential aisles in supermarkets. But what is a non-essential? I mean, are we talking, I mean, to some people, um, you know, pimento stuffed olives might be an essential. Or they go bananas if they don't get them. To somebody, a strawberry facial scrub might be an essential. Do you know, I need the strawberry in my face. It's it's interesting what's essentials. I mean, a supermarket I shop at has got a range of essentials. Uh, you know, so instead of paying two pounds for a bar of soap, you pay 30p and stuff like that. Excellent. SC and SAF Edinburgh, I'm sure I don't drive yet, says Wayne Watson. They did. SC and SF was uh, because uh, what you would have, Sugar Charlie, you would have... Um, that would be, yes, that would be in these days Sugar Charlie, probably from the alphabet. Uh, I know there's a Sugar Charlie over, but that now would be Sierra Charlie. SF would be Sierra Foxtrot. So that would have been Sugar Foxtrot, probably. S for sugar. Am I right? Does anybody old enough to remember when they did the alphabet, maybe in the police or something, did you use S for sugar? Hey, from West Yorkshire, says Charlene Haining Lockwood. Where are we talking about? What sort of wonderful places are we talking about in West Yorkshire? We love West Yorkshire, and of course. I used to broadcast to West Yorkshire on Magic Radio. Fantastic stuff. I have a Reliant Foss registered and sold in Wishaw. It's 47 years old and still going strong. And does it have a Lanarkshire registration? Stevie Brown, Dinky Doo, Wayne Watson, um, Chris McCarran, Reg GM was from Motherwell, the fabulous Chris McCarran there. V was the first for Lanarkshire. Fantastic. So if you had a V, so V1 would have been the first car in Lanarkshire. Amazing, Chris McCarran. Thank you. Hope you're keeping well. Lovely to know you're there. Talking about cars, I have the receipt for a brand new 1300E Escort. My dad bought in 1974, brand new on the road, 1378. In today's money, that's 27,000. I remember wondering if I could ever save up for an MG Midget brand new, a pound a cc. It was a 1275 engine and it was 1,275 pounds, and that would be probably about 1974. Do you still have the car, Peter Connolly? That might uh, that might still be worth a bit of money. Uh, the Lion Garage in Castle Hill Road, Wishaw, still has its uh, has its what has its number? I don't know what that one is. Original stickers or oh, its original stickers? Ah, fantastic. Have a fantastic day, Scotty. The listeners off for a wee cycle ride. Enjoy. Here it's time I was away. Stuart Campbell's watching. Hi, Scotty. I think what it'll be like the first day the lockdown ends. What will the pubs be like? Oh, my goodness me. That we open them again. Of course, dear knows what will happen. Guys, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, stay safe. Stay fabulous. This is Scotty McLeod saying to every single one of you, Dinky-doo.